Hey guys, and welcome to the first video of organic chemistry. And um, first off, I would like to define exactly what organic chemistry is. Now, organic chemistry is basically the study of organic compounds, but the exact definition of an organic compound isn't completely agreed upon by all chemists around the world. However, a, bi a simple enough definition for an organic compound, which is generally recognized, is any compound whose molecules contain carbon atoms. Um, now, there happens to be a wide variety of organic compounds, which is why we feel compelled to dedicate an entire topic to their study. Uh, now, this variety owes itself to the fact that carbon can form four bonds, and it is relatively compact. Now, this enables it to make a wide variety of molecules which are stable. So unlike silicon, which is the next element in the group, um, it can make lots of compounds which don't tend to deteriorate very quickly. Um, now, start to start off with, this incredible variety of organic compounds might seem quite daunting. Uh, we've got propane, ethanoic acid, hydrogen cyanide, and there are much more that you could name. However, they all follow a simple pattern and structure. You'll find that all organic compounds could be put into a set of different classes, each with their own chemical properties uh, and each with their own different trends. Um, now, the object of this lesson will be to introduce you to these different classes of organic compounds uh, because that's really where organic chemistry begins. Um, now, to f first off, you need to know what the definition of a homologous series is. And I would like to first give you the example of propane. Um, you can see its structure here. It's a molecule with three carbon atoms and eight hydrogen atoms. Now, this kind of looks a bit like a branch. If I shorten this branch by taking away a carbon atom, I get ethane. So from propane to ethane. Then if I strip off one carbon one more time, I get methane. Now if I add a carbon to the um, original propane, I get butane. These all basically look the same, and that's how we can intuitively tell that they're part of the same homologous series. It's because they all look similar. But of course, that isn't the definition that we're going to give to a, hom to a homologous series, although it's a good way to be able to recognize it. Now, theoretically, I could keep adding on carbons into this branch, and then I would go off to uh, pentane, hexane, um, heptane, and so on, just longer branches of essentially the same thing. Um, but we can all see that they look similar, and we all see that they're essentially the same thing, just longer or shorter. Now at this point, I would encourage you to count the number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms of each of these compounds, which you could see. Uh, pause this video if you like, um, but I'll carry on. Here are the formulae for these different compounds, essentially telling you how much. So first CH4, then C2H6, and so on. Now, could you invent a kind of formula which would allow you to figure out the number of hydrogen atoms present in any of these compounds, um, given that you know how many carbon atoms are present? Well, as it turns out, there is a formula for this all of these compounds follow the basic general formula, as we call it, that's an important term, CnH2n plus 2. That is the general formula for this class of organic compounds. And that basically means if you have n number of carbon atoms, let's say 2 for ethane, uh, if you want to find the number of hydrogen atoms, all you have to do is multiply that by 2, so you have 4, and then plus 2, so you get 6. And you can try it. This works for methane, propane, and butane as well. Now, butane is, I would think, um, a relatively good example to show why this general formula works in the first place. Uh, if you look at one of these little mid-branches, now I chose butane because it is quite a lot of them, um, if you look at one of these mid-sections, it contains one carbon atom and two hydrogen atoms. So, in total, if you want to find out how many carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms there are in this middle section, uh, you just multiply this one unit by the number of units there are. 
So this would give you the formula CN H2N. Uh, but then you also need to consider these two hydrogens on the side, essentially terminating the molecule. And then you add those two, you consider them, you get CnH2n plus 2. So that's why this um, general formula works. Now, this is a specific property of homologous series, that they all follow the same general formula. So this class of organic compounds, or this homologous series, all follows um, the same formula, or the same general formula, CnH2n plus 2. This is important to remember. Another property of this homologous series, and indeed all homologous series, is that they follow gradual trends in physical properties. For example, from methane to butane, as these branches keep getting bigger, you get a gradual increase in the melting point and boiling point. And this gradual physical change as you go down the homologous series is one specific property uh, which you must mention when you're defining a homologous series. And thirdly, all of the compounds in the homologous series have this, or similar chemical properties, essentially the same chemical properties. Um, because they're composed of the same stuff. For example, this specific homologous series contains carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and only single bonds. Um, and if you've studied uh, chemistry um, at high school level, you should know what a single bond is. But essentially, that means that there's a single pair of electrons being shared by the bonding atoms. And this specific homologous series, which I've shown to you now, um, is called the alkane family, or the alkanes. That is the name that we give to molecules that look like this, with single bonds uh, and branches of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Now, perhaps now we should uh, take a look at a different homologous series. This time, let's look at a specific compound called propene. Now, as you can see, uh, there is a double bond between two carbon atoms uh, in propene. Uh, similarly, we could decrease the size of this molecule, just take off a carbon, but making sure that we still have this double bond to create ethene. Um, and we can also increase the size to make butene or butuene. I'll explain why the two is there in the next video. But the point is, the, uh, this double bond is still there. Uh, now at this point, you might be wondering why I skipped methene. Well, if you look at the structure of methane, you'll be able to tell why there could not be a double bond between two neighboring carbon atoms. Because this carbon atom has no carbon atoms to bond with, essentially. So it's the same deal. Uh, counting all of these atoms in ethene, propene, and butene, you can come up with another general formula. This time, CnH2n. Well, where is that plus 2 gone? Well, since uh, there is a double bond present, two of the carbons here need to sacrifice two of the potential bonds that they could have made to bond with hydrogen. Not each, but collectively. Each they would have to sacrifice one. Uh, so essentially, we've taken away the capability of these molecules to hold two more hydrogen atoms. So instead of CnH2n plus 2, it's just CnH2n for this specific new homologous series. And there's a name we give to this uh, new homologous series. They're called the alkenes. Um, and the specific property of alkenes is that they're essentially the same as alkanes, except that they contain a double bond. This property of alkenes, that they contain a double bond, is what leads us to call them uh, unsaturated. When all the bonds are single, we say that they're saturated. When there's a double bond involved, or a triple bond, we call them unsaturated. And this is important to remember. Now, let's look at a third and final homologous series. I promise to you this will be the last one. Um, let's look at the compound propanol. It's essentially the same as propane, except instead of a H at one of the ends, it contains an OH, a hydroxide functional group. And the reason I did not draw a bond between the O and the H is that this OH um, 
it, it is useful to consider it as a single entity, that it moves around as an OH, that it acts as an OH, and not an O and a H, for the sake of remembering all these Malga series. Now, it's the same deal. We can take away uh, carbon atoms to make this look simpler. We can get ethanol, methanol, and we can extend, uh, ex extend, expand it to create butanol. It's the same deal all over again. And here, let's try creating the formulae for these compounds. What we find is that we do get kind of a gradual increase in the numbers of carbon and hydrogen atoms as we've seen before. But this OH stays constant. Therefore, when we write the general formula for this homologous series, we get CnH2n plus 1 OH. Now it is useful, or it is necessary, to put this H in the OH separate from the other H's, because it's part of this one entity, this one group OH. And now it's 2n plus 1 instead of 2n plus 2, because the bond that it could have made with the hydrogen is now being devoted to bonding with the OH. And this works because oxygen can make two bonds. It's in group 6. Right. This specific homologous series is called the alcohols, everyone's favorite uh, homologous series. And they're characterized by this presence of this um, OH. And when a group like this defines a, hom a homologous series, we call it a functional group. So by seeing this OH and the rest of the structure, you can already tell that it's an alcohol. This OH defines the alcohols, essentially. It is a functional group, we call it. And uh, lastly, before I finish this video, I would like to explain to you briefly um, the naming of these different compounds. You might have seen certain patterns, such as methane, uh, methanol, uh, ethane, ethene, ethanol, propane, propene, propanol, butane, butene, butanol, blah blah. Um, this is essentially just a chemist's way of counting carbon atoms in organic compounds. Chemists do count in strange ways. For 1, 2, 3, and 4 carbon atoms, you've got meth, eth, probute. Uh, for 1, 2, 3, 4 protons in atoms, they call it hydrogen, helium, lithium, uh, beryllium, and so on. Chemists do count in strange ways, but that's basically all you need to know. Um, whatever homologous series, whatever suffix you add to determine the homologous series, whether it be ane, ene, anol, the prefixes always stay the same and they tell you how many carbon atoms there are in the compound. And we'll talk more about naming in the next video for now thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time